Welcome back to episode three of SharePoint Framework Development for Beginners. In this episode, we're going to build on the development environment that we set up in the last episode, and we're going to use Yeoman to create our web parts, and we're going to install the development certificate and test them on the real live environment. Let's dive straight in. Excellent. So let's start on our web parts. So as you can see, I'm in my developers directory here. I've created one called source. I'm going to have a look at what's in here already, and there's not a lot. I've got a folder called SPFX, but I'm going to create a new one to store this project in. So I'm going to Excellent. Let's have a look. Okay. And CD SPFX 2025. Fantastic. So if you remember from our previous video, link above somewhere, that we need to use Yeoman to create this. But the first thing I want to check is what version of Node I'm on. And we do that by doing Node V. I'm on 22. If I wasn't, I could just use FNM use 22. Um, as we learned in the last video. So now I'm in this folder, I'm going to create my solution. So I'm going to make a folder for it first. Um, I'm going to call this web parts. I'm going to go into web parts and I'm going to type yo for yeoman. Okay, so the first web part I'm going to create is my welcome web part. So I'm going to do yo. I'm going to use the Microsoft SharePoint generator and I'm going to stick with my solution name for now, web parts. But you could call this something for your collection of web parts that would be suitable. I'm going to choose web part. And the first one we're doing is called welcome. This is the one that says good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm going to choose the React framework but of course you can choose minimal. That's uh, just what the basics that's needed to scaffold the web part, or in fact, no framework. So you can bring in your own view, Angular, etc. For these tutorials, I'm sticking with React. It will install the dependencies. Excellent. So we've templated out our first web part. Now we're going to add another one to the solution. If you remember, this is the FAQ web part. We type yo again. And again, we choose the Microsoft SharePoint template in Yo, but this time it's going to recognize there's already a project and it will add our web part to it when we choose web part. Hence the warning where it says, make sure you're in the right directory. So I'm going to use web part. And this time I'm going to call it FAQ. This is the web part that's going to read from a list. I'm going to choose React. Excellent. So now we can look at what we've uh, created. If I look at the folder and here we've got all our files. So now I want to check that it builds. And I do that by typing gulp build. Okay. So now that we know the default template builds, there's something else we need to do. We need to create a dev certificate. This allows our web part and our local environment to talk to SharePoint Online. Clever stuff. And we do that by typing gulp trust dev cert. And now we're ready to go. So I'm going to start Visual Studio Code and I'm going to open our folder which if you remember, for me, it was under an area called source, SPF X 2025 and web parts. I'm going to select that folder and here's all our code. Now in the next video, I'm going to explain what everything is, but before we can run this to check everything's working, I'm going to have to do a couple of amends. So the first thing I'm going to do is edit where we're going to run this against. So I'll show you what I mean. If we go into config and serve.json, notice this is where it's going to run. So I'm going to put it against our 
development workbench. This will be the one that you've got from a previous video, but it'd be your cloud dev dot SharePoint dot com in my case. Excellent. So that's the first change I want to make. The second one I want to make is for the two web parts that we've created. I just want to put a little icon in for them. OK, um, not really necessary, but a nice to do at this point. So I'm going to go to our source. I'm going to go into web parts and I'm going to go into FAQ and you've got FAQ web part manifest .json. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to change the name of the web part in here to info. I know that this is a good web one that can be used. Now you do get these warnings here with because um, you can't really in JSON have comments. It doesn't stop it from building. But if you wanted to get rid of those comments, you can do put a link below to a really good article that describes how you can get rid of these uh, in a cleaner way. But for now, you can either leave them or delete them. I'm also going to go into my welcome web part and go into the manifest there, welcome web part manifest. And where it's got our icon name, I'm going to change that to comment. Now, if you want to see what icons you can add, again, I'll put a link to all those icons below. OK, so now I've done that, I'm going to go to the terminal. And I'm going to type gulp serve. And what this does is it looks in our config and it finds out where it's trying to run this against and it will open the browser and it will give us a little development area to run our web part. OK, so that's opened it up for us. And now when we add a web part, you'll see we've got in all of these ones I've created FAQ with the info icon. And we've got welcome with the welcome icon. So now we've got two web parts in there for us to start work on. So successfully, you've created two web parts in one solution and you've been able to deploy them. So there you are. You've got your web parts running in your SharePoint environment. In the next episode, we're going to take a deeper look at the welcome web part, do a bit more work on it, and have a first look at things like theming and see how we can use those in our web part. If you haven't done already, please subscribe so you can be notified for the next episode. I'll see you next time.